Our second example is called closest facility analysis. The idea of a closest facility analysis is very simple. You have locations in space and you want to find the closest facility to those locations. A facility could be a hospital, a clinic, it could be a waste depot, it could be anything in space to where uh, to which you want to travel to from some set of locations within space. For example, finding the closest hospital based again on the network distance to a traffic collision incident. So emergency vehicle routing, for example, is also an application for closest facility analysis. The first example we'll do with the driving network is called a closest facility analysis. For a public health seminar on COVID-19 messaging at hospitals, Ottawa Public Health wants to assign physicians to the seminars they'll be holding at the hospitals and assign the physician offices according to the closest hospital location to the physician office. So each physician has to be assigned to the closest hospital in terms of travel time for these seminars on COVID-19 messaging. So to do this, we need to know the physician locations and the hospital locations, like you see here on the little map. And this is called a closest facility analysis because we're taking what are called incidences. An incidence is something in space that we want to find the closest facility for, where facilities here are hospitals. Is the hospital and the incidences are the clinics or physician offices. And so each physician office needs to be assigned to its closest in driving time, not in geographic distance, like this, I'm just showing, for example, you know, we need to assign that to the closest hospital in terms of time. And that's called the closest facility analysis. And the names of the network classes are facilities and incidences. And remember, facilities are always the things you want to go to, and incidences are the things you want to go from. So we create a closest facility analysis layer in the analysis tab, network button. And then we end up with the closest facility analysis layer right here. And it has the classes facilities and incidences. These are required. So those are required things that must have locations on the network. Otherwise, you can't run this type of an analysis. So the first thing we do is import the network locations to the facilities class right here. And we do that with the import facilities button on the closest facility tab for the network group tab. So you have to make sure you select closest facility or you won't see that tab come up for closest facility. So then you click on import and up comes the regular add locations dialog. So there's nothing new here from before other than the naming of things and what we put into facilities. So closest facility, sublayer, the first one is facilities, and it knows that because we clicked on import facilities. So we just have to choose the hospitals layer. And again, that's in the same feature data set, hospitals. Then we can choose a field name for name. And this name, this is important because that's, that'll be carried over into the analysis so that we'll have the name of each hospital in the new attribute table for closest facility that will be produced. Then our regular 200 meter search tolerance 
You can also put a sort field here. It's not necessary, but I just like to have it sorted by name. So it's alphabetical in this case, since the physician, I shouldn't say the physician, but the hospitals are all um, sorted alphabetically. Their names are. Since it's the first time I'm loading, I can keep the append to existing locations on. Snap to network as usual, and then you click run. And that will load in the hospitals as the facilities, the things that we want to assign other points in space to according to closest time. Then we look at import incidences. Again, add locations. And it will fill in the closest facility and incident sublayer or class. Input locations this time are physicians because we're assigning physicians to the facilities. We need to know for each physician the closest facility. And this loads into the incidences class. The reason it's called incidences is it's often this is the type of thing that's used in routing, let's say, emergency services where you might have an incident taking place somewhere or multiple incidences and you need to route a, let's say, a um, emergency vehicle to the closest facility that can handle that type of an emergency situation and stuff like that. So the, the naming kind of comes from there. But it's not obviously limited to that. This is a general approach to assigning things on the network to other things on the network, whatever you want to incidences or facilities to be. So we're loading physicians in this case as the incidences. And we choose here for name, the physician ID, and that will pair up later with the name of each hospital. So we want to be able to see, of course, which physicians go to which hospitals. So we need to have something that identifies the physician and the hospital paired together. So we know who's going where for the seminars. Again, nothing new down here. And we click Run. Next, we set up the analysis before running it. Now that we have loaded our classes, both the incidences, which are the physicians and the facilities, which are hospitals. Now we want to say towards facility because we're routing things from physician to facility. So it's the travel time to the facility that matters in figuring out the closest um, hospital for each physician. And what do we want to find? Well, one, we want to find the one best facility or closest facility in terms of time for each physician location. So we put a one here. If we wanted to find the first two, then we would put two there. And then we would find the two closest hospitals for each physician or three or four, all the way up to N facilities. So we have eight, for example, so we could put a maximum here of eight. And then we would have, well, all eight and the time it takes to travel from the, each physician to all eight of the facilities. The next thing is the ge output geometry again. So in this case, the output geometry could be nothing because we may only need a table. And the output geometry doesn't actually do anything except produce a visual representation of this uh, optimal routing in the network to each facility from each physician office. So if we want to see that routing or the actual lines, in the network, we would choose a long network, but that takes longer to compute. No matter what you choose here, the solution will be based on the network itself. So it'll follow the network from each physician to the closest hospital in terms of time along the network even though it may not be represented by anything on a map, or it could be represented by straight lines, or it could be represented by the actual paths themselves, right? Now, the reason a long network takes longer to compute is because it has to make a whole bunch of geometries 
in the solution. Rather than just doing the uh, algorithm, algorithmic computation to find the closest facility for each physician, it will have to also compute and create geometries that follow the network. And that takes time to compute. Straight lines are quicker to compute and still give a visual, a quick, and actually a better visual assessment of which physicians are going to which locations visually. It'll just put a straight line on the map to represent that network distance, or actually not to represent the network distance, but to represent um, which physicians go to which facilities. And a straight line will be drawn from the physician to the facility, even though the actual solution was based on a network distance. It just represents those graphically as such. So I, I like to use the straight lines. You can choose a long network. It'll just take longer to compute, that's all. Straight lines are just quicker to compute, and they give a much better um, visual uh, portrayal of the routing. And you click Run. So the result would look like this. And here's an example. So in this example here, um, I chose eight. So I chose to choose all eight of the facilities. If you follow the slide previously, you'll just do one, which is fine. But I chose all eight. And then, for example, here, I'm just highlighting the Sisters of Charity Hospital. And there's a bunch more up here, too, you don't see. So Sisters of Charity Hospital, right here, near the river, has a whole bunch of physicians routed to it. And the, the um, uh, shape length is given here as an example. And then the time as well. The total time will be in, in a field next to that, etc. But what it shows then, visually then, is what you see here. This is the example of the Sisters of Charity Hospital is right there in the middle, in the center of all that action. And each of the physician offices are just connected to that with a straight line. And it shows very clearly visually which physicians are routed to this hospital versus, let's say, this one over here. Versus this one over here or this one. And when you see stuff like that, of course, you'd have to go in and probably say, well, I'm going to choose one of these two hospitals, not both of them. It doesn't make sense to hold a seminar for three physician or three clinics. So I'd probably want to have those routed over here. Or depending on the hospital type and its capacity, all those ones routed over here. And that means removing one of those features from the, the um, facilities layer. And so that's the solution to that. And the important thing is this attribute table, which assigns the physicians to the particular hospitals. And I, I, so I said I used all eight there. I didn't. This is actually just one. So I didn't choose all eight there. I didn't mean to make that sound a bit confusing. Um, this is basically exactly what was on the previously sli previous slide. So I chose the closest, just the one closest for this analysis. I was thinking of another analysis for some reason. So that's closest facility analysis. And in the name field of the output line layer, so the output layer is just called lines. And it will either be looking like this, or it could be looking like nothing if you chose no geometry as output. Or it could be the actual, you know, from each of these, the actual network distance to, to get there. Not the distance, but the network paths. And it just makes it more confusing visually to, when you try to look at it, if it's not lines. So that's why I chose lines as the output. That being said, the name field is important because this combines the physician ID with the name of the hospital. So we then know the physician identifier for each hospital. And that's the important thing we wanted in the output was that combination of things because that's routing now or tells us which physicians will be assigned to each hospital. And you can see that here, this is the physician ID combined with the name of the hospital. 
And it's that field which is important for the actual final output because then you know who to assign where.